This lecture is going to discuss the question, what is figurative language? I want to start just looking at the word figure itself and, and what it means. And in its uses, both as a noun and as a verb, we see that figure has to do with learning or communicating uh, or understanding some information or idea. So when we use the word figure as a noun, it, it can be a symbol, uh, a shape, a form. We talk about someone's figure, the, the shape of their body. A figure is a representation um, of something else, a figure for something else. Uh, it's an amount, a calculation, a number. We fig The figure uh, that we came to for our monthly electricity bill is $100. So in all these senses, a figure is a sign that shows something, a sign that shows something else or that communicates something about an object or an idea or a number. And so when used as a verb, figure has very similar meanings. Uh, it can be to discover something. I figured out the secret that he was hiding from us. It can be to decide on something. I figure that I'm going to take the job in California because it has a better benefits and pay. I figure it can be an expectation or, or a guess, an estimate. I figure that my dad will arrive tomorrow at noon based on when he left. And so that's how we can also use figure as calculations. We figured the budget should be about a million dollars for this building that we're going to make. And a fig to figure can be to appear or to take part in something. A lot of variables figured into making our decision. She was a figure in, or she figured in the movie. She figured in the, the, the show, similar to feature. So even before we start getting into even basic definitions of figurative language, just that those concepts help us to think about what figurative language is and what it does. Uh, figurative language is on the one hand figures in language or figures made out of language, representations of things, ideas, actions, etc. in words, in language. But figurative language is also language that figures. Language that performs the function of figuring. It's language that reveals, discovers, represents something that was previously unknown or it represents it in a new way. So figurative language is about creating in some sense, about representing. And in this way, we might think about all language on some level is figurative. All language is about trying to talk about some idea or thing in the real world through words, through this strange function that we as humans have of speaking or writing down symbols that represent the sounds that we make as a way of figuring knowledge of one thing to someone else. Let's start off with just some basic definitions of figurative language. On the most basic level, we can say it's using words in an unusual way. In what way are they unusual? Well, it's using words to mean different concepts from that which is expected. So you're using a word to mean something different than what you would normally expect that word to mean. Another way to think about figurative language is using words from one topic, one subject matter, to talk about another topic. And why are we doing that? In order to make it more clear, more compelling, more powerful, or so forth. So these are just some basic definitions to think of figurative language. Now, as we discussed in class, 
we use figurative language every day as part of our normal speaking. So for example, if you're out um, looking for donations for something and your friend says, any luck getting any donations, you say, no, I totally struck out, meaning you didn't get any donations. Now what you're doing there is figurative language. You didn't literally strike out, you weren't striking anything, but you're using that image of striking out from baseball, which means to swing three times without hitting, to keep swinging and miss, you're using that to give them an understanding of just how unlucky you were in getting the donations. You might say, this assignment is so easy, it'll be a total slam dunk. Again, you're taking the image from basketball of a slam dunk, which is a very dominant action. It's something that you do to show off. It's also something that seems very easy. It looks easy when it's performed, although of course it's actually very hard. So it's a way to show off how powerful you feel about this essay, how well you're going to do on it. A couple other examples. How did you do on the test? I knocked it out of the park. Again, an image from baseball here, an image from sports, where the idea of hitting a ball so well, so powerfully that it goes out of the park. It's not just a home run, but it's outside of even the bounds of the, the ballpark itself. That's how good that hit was, and that's comparatively how well you did on the test. Or did you see that beautiful person? They are a real knockout. Again, the idea of a knockout from boxing. You're hit so strong, it knocks you unconscious. Just like the experience of seeing this beautiful person was so powerful that it was as though you were knocked out, as though you were hit and made unconscious of the world around you. That's how powerful it was. So as we can see from these last two slides, figurative language is a part of the way we speak. and We don't even think about it as figurative. So a few basic terms that I want to introduce now to get us a little bit more specific in our definitions. On the one hand, we have the idea of literal and the idea of denotation. I'm going to define these terms in a, in a minute. And on the other side, we have figurative and figure and the idea of connotation. And these terms are helpful for us for understanding how figurative language works in poetry. So here are some dictionary definitions from the Oxford English Dictionary of the word literal. Um, it comes from religious use. It comes from a religious interpretation of sacred texts. And it means the sense intended by the author of a text or the words in their natural or customary meaning as opposed to, say, a spiritual meaning in a sacred text. And that's where this idea of literal meaning comes from. When we apply it more specifically to literary text, we mean the exact sense expressed by the actual wording of a phrase as distinguished from an extended sense or the thing specified in a real or actual sense without metaphor. So this is what we mean by literal, the expected, customary, natural, exact, real meanings of language. Now on the side of figurative and figure, figurative means based on or involving the use of figures or metaphors, metaphorical, not literal. So it's language that does not mean the normal, customary, exact, real meaning of the words. And it can also, a figure of speech is a, various, is a form of expression. It deviates from the normal arrangement or use of words in order to give beauty, variety, force, clarity, make it more compelling. Right? So figures, figures of speech are what poets use, what we use in our everyday language to spice it up. And figurative is the opposite of literal. So we're dealing with something that is not literal, not real. Now there is a complication in this division between literal and figurative, um, and that is because in common usage, in everyday use, the word literally is often used to mean figuratively. Literally is often used to mean the exact opposite of literally. So for example, if you are watching a, a football game, you might hear an announcer say, what a tackle, he literally killed the quarterback with that hit. Well, no, he didn't literally kill the quarterback with that hit, that, then he'd be tried for murder. The quarterback is still alive. Here, the sportscaster is using the word literally to emphasize just how powerful the tackle was. He's actually meaning to say he figuratively killed the quarterback with that hit. But language is flexible. Things change in meaning. So we can use literally to mean figuratively, or people do it often. Another example, the movie was hilarious. It was so funny, I literally peed my pants. Well, maybe someone actually did wet themselves. But again, 
probably this person is using literally to mean actually figuratively. That is, it was, I laughed as hard that I thought I would pee my pants, or it was as though I had lost control over my bladder, but I didn't really do it. So this is just a complication and, and to think about when you use the word literally in your everyday speech and when you hear people use the word literally in their everyday speech, do they mean literally or do they mean figuratively? Now that second term under literal was denotation. And a denotation is a term used to denote or describe a thing a designation or the meaning or signification of a term. A denotation is like a name. So when we're talking about literal uses of language, we're talking about the denotations of those words. What is the meaning or significance of the term? What is the thing that it's describing? So literal language deals with denotations. What is denoted or marked or named by the word? Connotation is what signifies in addition to the word, what it means besides that primary denotation, besides the dictionary literal meaning, what is implied in a word in addition to its essential or primary meaning. So we're talking about associations with connotation. So in figurative language, we're thinking about the connotations associated with the word. So literal is denotation, the name, the thing described. Figurative is connotation, the ideas, the things that are suggested or implied, the associations that we have with the thing denoted, with the word that is used literally. Now to talk specifically about figures of speech, one general term that you can use to describe any figure of speech, if you're not sure if it's a metaphor or a simile or something else, um, is, is it's a trope. And a trope is just a figure of speech which consists in the use or of a word or phrase in a sense other than what is proper to it. So a trope is, again, it's just a general term for a figure of speech, any figurative language. It can also be a significant or recurrent theme, a motif, and I'll leave it to you to look up the word motif. And to use the word trope as a verb, you can say, I troped it. It's to represent or interpret something in a figurative or metaphorical way. So to express or depict an image figuratively as a, as a literary motif. So trope is just a general term for any use of figurative language. Anytime a, a, a speaker or author uses something that is not just the literal meaning, they are using a trope. A few of the specific types of figurative language that we will be discussing this semester. A metaphor, which is the primary one that we're most often familiar with. It's two unlike things compared implicitly, that is, without it being stated that they're being compared, or two unlike things that are equated or identified with one another. A simile is very similar to a metaphor, two unlike things that are compared, but they're compared explicitly using the words like or as. And in future lectures, you'll see descriptions of, uh, we'll talk about metaphors and similes and how they work. There are also some more rare ones that many people aren't as familiar with, like metonymy, which is the name of one thing used to refer to another associated with it. That sounds a little bit complicated. Again, talk about it later. And synecdoche which is a part of a thing used to refer to the whole thing. So for example, you might call your car a set of wheels, right? You're talking about the wheels, but you're referring to the whole thing. And then finally, personification, where you treat a non-human thing as though it had human qualities. And these are all, um, there are many other types of figures of speech. These are just some of the most uh, prominent ones, some of the most common ones that are used in literary texts. So how do we read for figurative language, even just at this beginning stage, before we start to think about metaphors, similes, etc.? Well, I think there's no one right way. There's no uh, uh, single method or perfect method to looking for, discovering, uncovering, and, and unpacking the meanings of figurative language. But there are some things we can think about when reading poetry or any form of literature. Um, of course, anytime that the language just seems poetic or imaginative or heightened, different from our normal everyday usage, that might be a way in which language, that might be a space, place in which language is being used figuratively or more imaginatively. If we see surprising comparisons or images, things that seem to be perhaps out of place or just different from what we might expect, that might be 
a place to look for figurative language or language being used, again, more imaginatively. Or language that seems heavy, important, weighted language, he language that seems meaningful. It sounds like this person means something important. They're trying to get something across that's maybe more than what they're saying with their literal words. It's not just the information, but some feeling or concept beyond it. That can be a place where language is being used creatively. Uh, or when the speaker or narrator, whoever, just seems to be talking about something else. They're saying one thing, but you have a sense that this isn't really what they mean. They want to say something else, but they're not saying it. Again, these are just some places, essentially what you're looking for is looking for moments of tension and surprise and strangeness, things that take you out of your everyday way of thinking and your sort of routine of just processing information in a mundane way and not necessarily thinking about things those are the places to look for figurative language and imaginative uses of language. So to review, we have this concept of literal versus figurative, of what is denoted or named by the exact normal everyday sense of the word, and what is implied or suggested in addition to that meaning, what is associated with it, and that's the figurative usage. And so there's a division here also between explicit or stated outright the literal states explicitly what it's talking about, whereas the figurative is implicit. It's implied, it's suggested, it's not stated outright. And we can also say it's a division between what's exactly referred to in the words and what's in addition to the words. These are all ways to think about this division between literal and figurative. And again, it's not that poets are using one or the other, it's that the literal language also has a figurative meaning beyond it. And figurative language clarifies, expands, explains, represents, reinterprets. In poetry, it makes us see something in a new way. It shows us something about what's being talked about that we hadn't seen before. But it gradually becomes normal and expected. So the idea of the essay, the assignment was a slam dunk. We don't think about the fact that we're using basketball as a reference there it's just expected it's a common everyday saying so it's sort of forgot it's sort of lost its figurative metaphorical sense unless we stop for a moment and pay attention to it so all metaphors gradually over time become dead metaphors <clears throat> a final thought so what are the figures or metaphors or ideas that you use to understand the world what comparisons and analogies do you accept without questioning them for example, the idea that the government can be run as a business, that government is like a business. That's a comparison. That's an analogy. That's a figure, a metaphor um, that many people just accept without questioning, well, what's the difference between a business and a government? What metaphors in the poetry that you've read seem most striking to you? What images, what language has made you see things in a new way, has made you say, huh, I never thought about it, that thing as having those particular characteristics. I never thought about it as being like this other thing, but now that I've read this, I can see something new, see something different. And that ultimately is the point of figurative language, to help you see something in a new way.